Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Code Mash. Yeah. <laughs> we appreciate you could be with us here today in person or online. Ladies and gentlemen, with no further delay, please give me a warm welcome to Microsoft, Josh Holmes. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate that. Welcome to Code Mash and It's Your Web. I'm very excited to be here today at Code Mash, here with, with the 900 people that are in the room here at Code Mash, and with all the people that are streaming in, the thousands of people from around the world that are online right now. My name is Josh Holmes, and Code Mash is the perfect conference for us to come talk about uh, all of the things that we're going to be talking about today because Code Mash is that mixing and mashing of all different flavors of web development together. And today, I get to talk about how web development is evolving at Microsoft. 500 years ago, Leonardo da Vinci said, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And if you've seen any of my presentations in the last three to four years, you know that simplicity is a reoccurring theme in all of my presentations. Well, it turns out, simplicity is also a reoccurring theme in all of the Microsoft web platform. There are many different flavors of web development out there. There are chocolate, vanilla, ice cream, and with ASP.NET, it's the same. You get to choose many different flavors of web development to solve the problem that you're trying to solve right now. There are ASP.NET web pages. These are new, and we're gonna talk about them quite a lot today. They're simple, light, and fast. ASP.NET web forms, very familiar, very reusable, productive, with a 10-year history, helping desktop developers come to the web and bring them into the web paradigm uh, in a familiar and comfortable way. And ASP.NET MVC, built on that very strong architectural principle of uh, the, the model view controller. Now this is a very powerful and extensible way to do web development. Additionally, we've got multiple flavors of web development tools. We're gonna to talk about two in particular today, Web Matrix, which again is new. And this is very simple and designed to support both ASP.NET and PHP. Additionally, Visual Studio, which is our flagship developer product, it's very powerful, flexible, and integrated, allowing you to go all the way from architecture through the testing and development phase of your project on into quality assurance, managing the full life cycle of your application. Web Matrix, very simple, designed to help you create, customize, and publish in a very simple and elegant way. There are three parts to Web Matrix that you're going to see. The first and the most obvious is the development IDE itself. Next is the web server, which is very simple and light with all the power of IIS7 and SQL Server CE, a file-based database that's very light with full compatibility with SQL Server or even SQL Azure. Web Matrix is built around three different scenarios. Sometimes you need to create a project from scratch. And of course, you can do that with Web Matrix. Sometimes you've got existing content, and of course, you can leverage that content with Web Matrix. Or third, and this is becoming more and more popular of a development paradigm, you start with one of the many awesome open source applications out there in the world. These include everything from content management systems to e-commerce solutions. And these will solve 90% of your business problem, but that last mile, you can use Web Matrix to quickly and easily customize, edit, and publish that site, solving your business problem. But regardless of how you're doing uh, ASP.NET uh, ASP web development, we've made that simpler with a new syntax called Razor. Razor is a very fluent way to slide between HTML and your code eliminating a lot of the ceremony of opening uh, brackets, closing brackets, and all those extra keystrokes, allowing you to focus on the essence of what you need to get done today. But let's imagine just for a minute that you need to integrate in some social networking site, such as Facebook or Twitter or something like that. 
Well, you can do that with the new concept called helpers and leveraging the exact same razor syntax to very quickly and easily integrate those right into your site. Or if you want to integrate in PayPal and be able to pay me a lot of money, I personally get very excited about that particular concept. But with PayPal, you can simply use this simple helper and the razor syntax to integrate that. But that's not where that stops. There's a very rich ecosystem of open source developers working on helpers that include the, of course, social media and, and uh, uh, e-commerce solutions, but also ways to help you build your site, like Template Monster or Bitly for uh, uh, URL shortening, uh, or ways to interact with your users. Um, there's geolocated services, there's event management, or you can even hit any service that exposes uh, open data protocol or OData using the open data helper, uh, or store information uh, out on the cloud with Windows Azure and its helper. Now, showing is a lot better than telling, so please help me welcome James Sr. from Microsoft to show you how to build an application from scratch with WebMatrix. James. Thanks very much, Josh. Thank you for such a warm welcome, and I can't say enough, it is great to be here at CodeMash this year. I've already booked my ticket for next year's event. I'm going to be flying out here again for sure. Now, in this demo, I'm going to show you how to create a website using WebMatrix and how simple it is. Now, when you open WebMatrix, you're going to be presented with this splash screen. And you're going to get a couple of options. First of all, you can create a site from Web Gallery. Now, this is where you can use many of the open source web applications that we have available out there on the gallery to get started. Alternatively, you can create a site from template. Now, that's what we're going to do today. So when I load the templates, we'll get a list of the templates that ship with WebMatrix. Now, those include things like JavaScript, HTML, images, assets, and all those things that you need to get started with building websites. Now, today, just for CodeMash, we have a very special template included, the CodeMash Bakery. So we're going to go ahead and create that. The other thing that comes with templates is the file-based database, SQL Compact. This is really useful because we can actually ship the database as a template with dummy data to get you started even more quickly. In the Site Manager pane here, we'll see that we can drill into files in our site and edit them. We can manage the databases, or we can run reports like SEO, which is really useful for optimizing our site before we publish to make sure it's findable out there using search engines. Let's run the site now and see what it gives us. Notice that we get options to run in all of the browsers that we have installed locally, which is great for testing. And here you can see the bakery website. We have an order page where we can specify our email address and shipping address and then place an order. Now, these templates are all CSS3 based and HTML5 and ship with jQuery, so they have the cutting edge uh, client side web technologies included to get you started. Now, this template, I want to add to it. I want to create functionality. First of all, I want to let people know who visit the site whether an item is in stock or not. And secondly, I want to add PayPal functionality so I can take transactions and make money off of my site. So let's go back into WebMatrix and add the stock capabilities first of all. Now, first off, I'm going to go into databases and add a new column. You notice how we have the SDF file here, which is the file-based database. And I'm going to go and define a new column in the products table. I'm going to call it stock. And we'll set that to false and create default value of zero. So now I save that. Uh, notice also that we can create relationships as well. So we can have the notion of primary keys, foreign keys, just as you expect in other databases too. In the data pane, I see I have my new stock column. Now I'm going to add in some fake data here. I'm going to leave one at uh, zero, the pair tart here, so we can test our code. Now that's the database setup. Fantastic. Next, let's drill into our files. Now, you'll notice down the left-hand side here, we have these CSHTML files. Now, these 
are our new Razor pages, ASP.NET web pages. And you'll see these um, all throughout the uh, new version of the web platform. I'm going to open the order.cshtml, and you'll notice that at the top of the page we have code that, first of all, queries the database, as well as accepts or handles the post from the client to the server. Down the bottom, we see we've got a lot of markup mixed in with code. And you might think, well, this looks familiar, something like classic ASP or PHP. And that's right, but there's a subtle difference. The at symbol means that we can easily transition between markup and code without having to close off our code statement. And that's inside the Razor parser, and it's very, very useful and makes it easy to write web pages. OK, let's add the code that we need to show, tell people that items are in stock or not. So we're going to go and say if product.stock greater than 0. And this is a very simple statement. We'll add an else clause. And then we'll start to type um, HTML. And notice how we get IntelliSense inside of the, the IDE. And then we'll say that Josh has already eaten this before, so we aren't able to get this particular product. Now, let's go and run that and see what happens when we go and visit the pear tart again. There we see we have a new message which tells the item is out of stock and we can't make the purchase. Right, so we've added that capability. How about the e-commerce capability in the PayPal, um, using PayPal? Now, every uh, website you create with WebMatrix and ASP.NET web pages comes with an administration area where we can manage packages and helpers in our website. So I'm going to log into the administration area here. And I'll see a list of the packages that I have installed already. We're going to go and find new ones online. Now notice how we have a really long list of helpers here. We've got helpers from Facebook, Foursquare, Freemium, um, Groupon, all these different helpers which make it really easy to add useful functionality to our website. Here's the PayPal one. So we're going to go ahead and open that, install it. And that will download the package and install the relevant assemblies and assets to my project. So now that we've installed that, we can go and explore what's been installed. Notice that in the bin we have a number of assemblies relevant for the PayPal um, service, as well as some documentation, which makes it really easy to find um, out about the API and get started. So let's add the PayPal functionality. That's to do at the moment. Now, PayPal provides lots of interesting services that we can use to uh, do transactions against, one of which is the Simple Pay API. This is probably the easiest one to get started, so we're going to use that today. And it takes a number of parameters. First of all, it takes the store that I want to pay, and I'm paying myself. Let's put my Hotmail address in here. Um, and then it takes the total price. Of course, we need to pass in that information. We then have the option of using the or passing in the customer's email address. But now we'll leave that blank and allow the customer to fill it out on PayPal's side. I can say, thanks for the purchase, as well to say, a nice message to my customer, as well as um, I can pass in the IP address for a bit of tracking. I'm going to fix this for, for now, as well as the source of the transaction. So this is the website. OK, so now that that has been called, what happens is PayPal logs a transaction in their system and gives me back a pay key. Then I can use this pay key to redirect the user back to PayPal to complete the transaction. So that's the last step in my code here. I just need to type response.redirect. And now I can get rid of the old version and go ahead and run the code. OK, so this time I'm going to go ahead and buy a uh, lemon tart. How about that? We're going to fill in uh, my email address, the shipping address and go ahead and place my order. I get passed through to the PayPal website, just like that. I can type in my password and pay for the transaction. I get returned back to my website, and I'm congratulated for my purchase. Thank you very much. So 
This is a template design that ships with Web Matrix. Now, what about if you wanted to use your own design or perhaps create something yourself? Now, I'm not a designer. I'm a developer, and I think we, can, we know where our strengths and weaknesses are. Now, there's a great site out there that provides uh, templates for me to get started with great designs, and that's templatemonster.com. I'm really excited today to announce that we've teamed up with templatemonster.com to provide lots of new razor-based templates, including code, markup, JavaScript images, and also the file-based databases for you to get started with your own websites building in Web Matrix. Let's go and show you what that experience looks like. I'm going to go ahead and purchase uh, this template. Seems like an applicable one for my bakery. We'll check out with PayPal. Now I get to this URL here. Now notice I'm going to copy and paste this and head back to a separate project which is actually empty. And I'm going to go and go to the admin page within this new project. OK, we'll log in as before. But this time, we're going to head to another part of the website where we can manage our package sources. We'll call this templates. And we'll paste in the URL. And now, when I go back to my package manager, this shows up in the options. So if I go to online and select this list, we have template. We'll see we have our bakery template that I've just purchased from templatemonster.com. So we'll go ahead and install that. And now pull the package down from templatemonster.com and install it locally and set it up all within um, Web Matrix. So let's head back and see what that's done. Here we have all of the assets which are inside of that package, so images, database, et cetera. And now we have a great looking website which we can go and visit. So that's looking much better already. So we're almost ready to. Now, in Web Matrix, we've made it super easy to do the publishing process, starting with finding web hosting. We've got all of the great deals listed on the web hosting gallery, and you can filter by things like price, hard, hard drive capacity, et cetera, um, to get the, the perfect hosting provider for you. Now, I've already signed up for my hosting provider, and they sent me an email welcoming me to the service, which is great. They also included in that email a, an attachment. And that was a file that's going to help me get set up in Web Matrix for publishing my website. So if I go and click on Import Publishing Settings and locate the file that I saved out of the email, Codemash Bakery, notice how all of the fields have been auto-populated for me. So I don't have to remember the passwords, et cetera. We're going to go verify that connection. Of course, it works. And we'll go and save the settings. Now I'm ready to publish. The first thing that will happen if I haven't published the site before, it will ask me if I want to run a compatibility test. And what that does is make sure that the web server is set up correctly, things like file permissions, things like components that need to be installed on the web server to have everything run. And that's not just for ASP.NET, that's also for PHP. So we'll check if PHP is installed or if MySQL has installed too. So we're going to continue. And it's going to go and check which files we need to upload. You notice we have a list of all the files plus the SDF, portable database file. And we're going to go ahead and publish. Now, we're using Web Deploy, a technology to publish the website here. And it's really cool for two reasons. The first is it's very fast because it uses a one stream to publish all of the files instead of using a new connection each time for each file, like FTP. The other great thing that it does is it checks to see if there are any newer versions on the client compared to the server. So it only updates the files that you've changed. So you won't be update, uploading unnecessary files. So let's go and load our website. We'll just wait for the bakery to warm up and make sure it's ready. And in summary, I just wanted to kind of, re kind of uh, recap on what we've seen. We've seen how easy it is with Web Matrix to get started building a website. We've seen the new Razor syntax and how you can slip between HTML and code very seamlessly. We've also seen the rich ecosystem of helpers available out there, whether you're doing social or e-commerce or any other thing. And then we've seen the great templates available from templatemonster.com, as well as how easy it is to publish your final website. Thank you very much. Thank you, James. First, I really enjoyed seeing that and seeing how easy it is to create 
an application from scratch using WebMatrix and leveraging the Razor syntax and templatemonster.com and all the other things that James got to demo there. However, that's actually only one of the ways to create content with the web matrix. So the other one that's really exciting to me personally is starting with one of the many open source packages that are out there. I don't know if you've seen the web application gallery. We've got close to 40 applications representing the top PHP and ASP.NET open source projects in the world. And this has been up for 18 months and you've been able to install applications with the web platform installer. And in fact, we've had two and a half million installs from the web application installer. But we're gonna make that even easier with Web Matrix to download, install, and edit, customize, and publish an existing open source application. But to show you how that's done, please help me welcome to the stage .NET Nuke with Sean Walker and Joe Brinkman. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Josh. Good afternoon, Code Mashers. We are very excited to be here today. This is the first time that I've attended Code Mash, and I would definitely want to come back again. Um, specifically, we are excited today to demonstrate or showcase some of the rich integration that we've created between uh, Web Matrix, Razor, and .NET Nuke. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with .NET Nuke, uh, it is the most popular open source web content management platform for ASP.NET. Uh, what this means is we have more than 6 million downloads of our application over the last eight years, and we have more than 600,000 production websites running our application today. Joe is going to be doing the driving of the demo, and I'm going to be doing the backseat driving, so if anything goes wrong, I get somebody to blame. Um, but with that, uh, we're going to get started with the demo. So uh, the first thing that we want to do is we want to demonstrate how simple it is to open an existing .NET Nuke website using Web Matrix. So to do that, we're going to open the Windows Explorer, and we're going to browse to the location where uh, .NET Nuke website has been installed. And we can right-click on the root folder of that website and choose Open in Web Matrix. This will launch the, uh, the Web Matrix development environment, where you have a variety of tools that you can utilize to better manage your website. Um, what we'd like to do immediately is get our website up and running. So with that, we'll go to the site area, and we'll choose the URL so that it launches in our favorite browser. Um, while that's loading, I just want you to, to, to note that uh, the amount of simplicity and the amount of user experience um, that has gone into the, the Web Matrix product, which makes it a lot less cumbersome to use than some of those heavyweight IDEs that we're used to today. Um, so with the, uh, the .NET Nuke website up and running, we want to move on to the, the next portion of our demo, where we uh, demonstrate the rich Razor uh, integration that we've provided in .NET Nuke today. Um, so there's a, .NET Nuke is a composite web application. Uh, what that means is at runtime, uh, module output is assembled to, to create a, a complete page, and then that output is shipped down to the web browser. Um, traditionally, modules in .NET Nuke have been created using standard ASP.NET user controls. Um, with the, uh, the uh, emergence of Razor, it actually creates a new capability in .NET Nuke that we can allow people to create modules using Razor syntax. And we're going to demonstrate a couple different ways that we can do that today, which I hope you find interesting. Uh, the first scenario that we want to cover is a scenario where you have an existing website. Um, perhaps you're a power user. Perhaps you have some level of scripting capability or scripting skills. And you would like to very quickly add some additional functionality to your website. Um, so what we've created in .NET Nuke is a new module called a Razor Host module. Uh, the Razor Host module can be added to a page in .NET Nuke through the control panel. And once it's added to a page, then you can go into the edit script uh, area of the, uh, of the module, where you can choose from a variety of different canned scripts that we've provided with our platform, or you can create or modify scripts of your own. Um, for this particular uh, uh, demo, we're going to choose a, a Razor script that we've already created. Um, that script is called the contact list. Uh, the contact list script is designed to pull a, or, or to, to display a list of users, registered users of, from your .NET Nuke website. Um, what's interesting about this particular Razor script is the level of integration that you can see with the .NET Nuke API. So using, both using statements, you can see that it's very deeply integrated with the .NET Nuke API in terms of interacting with the rich objects of which are available in our API. Um, 
if we scroll down through this script, you can also see how sophisticated the Razor script is. A lot of people look at Razor as being simply a templating engine, uh, where in fact you can build very sophisticated web application using Razor. Um, so we're going to make this uh, particular script active, which means that we can render this particular uh, user list on our site. So once the page refreshes, we're going to see uh, the, uh, the user list module uh, or the contact list module in action. And we can choose different um, options from the filter to display users in different roles, which also demonstrates that Razor has the capability for data entry as well as templating and output. So the, uh, the second scenario that we want to cover today is, is a scenario where perhaps you have some common functionality uh, that you would like to reuse either within your current website or across other websites. Uh, in the .NET Nuke world, we call this our modular architecture. Um, and we're really excited uh, today to announce that um, you can now create um, modules in .NET Nuke using very native Razor syntax, and they operate the same way that any other .NET Nuke module operates. So the first thing that we want to do is we're going to uh, create a module. Um, we've already created a script, uh, or a Razor script, um, on our system. And so we go in and we browse to the particular folder where that script exists. This particular script is called Eventbrite because it pulls a list of events that are interesting to us into our .NET Nuke application. Um, we've already created a user control uh, for the Eventbrite module. The Eventbrite user control is in fact the interface which allows Razor scripts to be rendered within the .NET Nuke environment. So now that we've given that module a name, uh, we can register that module within the .NET Nuke application. Now that the uh, module is registered, uh, it's not yet active on our site, we need to add an instance of that module to a page on our site. So we're going to go back to the page that we were on before. We're going to go to the control panel, and we're going to drop down and, and select the, uh, the Eventbrite module. Uh, once we save this, or once we inject an instance of this module onto our page, we're going to see a list of events. Um, the initial view of this module is not that interesting. It's just an unordered list of events, and this isn't providing a very great user experience for people coming to our website. So we would like to enhance the capabilities of this module, and this is where WebMatrix comes back into the picture again. So if we move back over into WebMatrix and we go into the files area, we can browse into the, the file structure of our site, and we can find the Eventbrite module. We can open the Razor script, um, and we can see in WebMatrix how we have a much richer uh, editing experience uh, through Web Matrix when it comes to Razor syntax um, than we would get in through just a standard text box uh, through the .NET Nuke application. All right, so we already have some, some scripts that we've created for some various functionality that we can add to our uh, Eventbrite module. Um, the, the first thing that we want to do is we want to render this list as a grid. Um, and so what we're going to do in this case is we're going to take advantage of some of the helpers, which Josh mentioned earlier. Uh, the helpers are essentially things, or composite reusable controls, which allow you to, to, to redo common tasks, such as retrieve data or display data. In this case, we're going to use the Razor uh, web grid, which is going to allow us to display our events in a grid format with paging. So we've already got the, the script. Um, in Web Matrix, and once we save that script, then we can refresh the browser, and we get our user list, or sorry, our event list, in a, looking in a completely different manner, with paging, with called nice column titles. Um, but this may not be exactly the user experience that we would like um, to present to our to our users. So, and what we're going to do is we're going to make another change, um, and in fact, in this case, we're going to use another helper. We're going to use a helper that was provided as part of Eventbrite. This helper has a better default view, a much richer view of the events. So we're going to plug that script now into a Web Matrix. We're going to save, and we're going to uh, refresh our browser again. And in this case, we're going to get a, a, a really rich list of the events, a much more friendly list. So. What we've done in this case is we've created a, a, an Eventbrite module in .NET Nuke fully using Razor Script. Uh, what we could do at this point, if we wanted to share this module um, with another user, another .NET Nuke user, perhaps to install on their site, we could utilize the .NET Nuke um, internal packaging capability to create a module package, which we could then share with other users. Perhaps we could even upload it to the, uh, the .NET Nuke marketplace, snowcover.com, where we might be able to sell this module to other developers who are using .NET Nuke. 
Um, so with that, we've, uh, we've demonstrated a couple different things today. First, we demonstrated that using the web matrix uh, tool, we can open existing .NET Nuke websites and manage them very easily. Second, we demonstrated that Razor is a first class citizen within the .NET Nuke uh, architecture, and so we can create modules using Razor syntax, and they're very rich the same way that uh, you would create modules using user controls. Um, the last thing that I need to mention, obviously, is when you can get this. Um, so the, uh, the web matrix and Razor support um, in .NET Nuke is available in .NET Nuke 5.6.1, which is available today from our website on .NETNUKE.com in release candidate form. In next week, the final release will ship on Wednesday, January 19th. Um, and with that, I'd like to thank you for inviting us. I thank Microsoft for including us in this event. And have a great conference. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Joe. Appreciate it. All right, thank you very much, guys. I mean, I've been a fan of .NET Nuke uh, since the beginning. Uh, it, it's a great content management system. I've ended up using it in a number of different uh, scenarios. But it's really exciting to see how easy and how simple it is to download, install, customize, and publish with WebMatrix. But one of the things that I pointed out early on is that WebMatrix is not just about ASP.NET. It's also supporting PHP and MySQL. So, it's actually very interesting to talk about PHP and MySQL on stage during a Microsoft event, uh, or, or my, not Microsoft event, Microsoft session. These PHP is, uh, over the last handful of years, been a very heavy investment area for Microsoft. IS7 has got a tremendous number of product enhancements, including FastCGI, WinCache, URL redirection, all of which support PHP exceedingly well. And MySQL and PHP have really become ready for prime time on the Windows platform. But again, showing is better than telling. So with that, let me introduce Ryan Osmek up to, in, to show you how to create a Joomla website with WebMatrix. And actually, I mean, as I talked about PHP, it's actually extremely exciting for me to have Ryan up here from Joomla, to, because Joomla being one of the most foremost PHP content management systems on stage with Microsoft co-presenting and talking about web matrix. So with that, thank you very much, Ryan. Excellent. Thank you very much, Josh. Thank you, Code Mash. Good to see you guys here. My name again is Ryan Osmick. I'm from Open Source Matters. Open Source Matters is the nonprofit organization that helps support and is behind the Joomla project. And today what I want to show you is how easy it is to install customize and deploy a Joomla site using Web Matrix. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So if I dive into my web gallery, I can click and I can see a variety of different web applications available. I'll go ahead and scroll down, of course, to Joomla. There it is. And I can go ahead right away and just give myself a site name. Let's call it Consult Co. I'll go ahead and click Next. It sees that I'm going to be using a MySQL database. And yes, I'm going to go ahead and install it on my local machine here. Of course, it wants a password for this new database that I'm creating. So let's go ahead and create one. And click Next. Excellent. And on this screen here, we can see all the different components that will be installed uh, with this new Joomla site and any agreements necessary. I'll go ahead and click the Accept button there. It'll go through the process right now of preparing everything I need for the last step, what I need, which is to configure the Joomla basic configuration information. So here, of course, we've got some more passwords to type in. That one looks good, another database password. All this is directly within the interface. Okay, one more. Excellent, no sample data for now, but I would like to change the website's name. How about back to consult co? Site admin, oh look, another password. One more time, this time it's for the Joomla admin. And then give it an email address. Perfect. I'll hit the next button. Excellent, so again, behind the scenes here, it's compiling everything, getting it all ready to go. So within just a few seconds here, should have access to seeing my Joomla site uh, published right away within Web, Web Matrix. Excellent, so we can see MySQL, PHP, Joomla, everything ready to go. I'll click OK. 
brings me back into the web matrix interface. And right away, let's take a look to see how our new site looks. Click on the URL link here. And there we go, okay, so we're getting started. Obviously, this is a little bare bones, so let's clean this up a little bit. I wanna make it a little fancier, so I'm gonna go ahead and log into the nice Joomla backend interface here. And log in. Excellent, so this is the Joomla admin screen for those of you who haven't seen it before. And if I want to, I can really easily just go into our extensions manager and install an extension that has some extra features as well as uh, a new uh, theme or a template for us. I'll select it, click open, and go ahead and install that file. Excellent, so you can see one part of it here includes a theme or a template, which we say in Joomla world. I can go ahead and just choose that template to be our default template for the site. So there's our new template. Go over here to default. You can see now it's the default template for our site. Uh, you can make other design changes obviously within the Joomla administrator, but let's just take a look at what we can do within uh, Web Matrix itself. I can dive into the files tab here. I can see the listing of all the files within the Joomla site we just created. Included in that is our templates directory. Including in that is the new theme that we installed. And right down below that, here's index.php for our Joomla template. You can see a nice coding interface with nice syntax highlighting here. Makes it easy for us to make those HTML changes necessary for our site. We can also go ahead and just mass import images through Web Matrix directly into the Joomla install. So I'll go into our images directory here. And then stories is one of the default places where Joomla stores its images. I can choose this add existing files. And from right here, I can dive locally into my computer. Let's say, oh, look at that, that's nice. Got a bunch of photos ready to go. Select those, open them, and voila. All those have now moved themselves all, all the way over into our new site. So we show the files, but what about the database? Within Web Matrix, we can allow uh, Joomla developers to manage their MySQL database directly within Web Matrix as well. So I'll dive into the databases button down below here. I can see the new database that was created for my site. Within here, I can see all the tables that have been created for the site. And if I make this go just a little wider here, we can take a look, for instance, at the, co uh, the components table. You can edit records within the database table really easily here. At the same time, you can go, go ahead and, deploy, and apply definitions and add columns to tables pretty quickly. Well, in this case, we've got this content table here, which, as you can imagine, is where the content for the site is stored. And it's looking pretty bare bones. So what I want to do is just go ahead and take a MySQL dump that I had already, put it right into uh, the system using Web Matrix. To do that, I can just click on the Home tab, go to the New Query button. I can see I've got a new query window ready to go here. I'll just hop into a little notepad document I've got open. Select all, copy, move over. Paste that all in there, and now I can just go ahead and execute this uh, SQL query. Commands completed successfully. Gotta love seeing that. We're looking good to go now. So why don't we just go ahead and take a look to see how things have changed since I last looked. Go to site, hop into the URL, take a look under a new tab. What we should see in a moment is our site with the updated extensions, updated template and the design, and updated content, menus, pages, etc. So this should be opening up here in a second, all right? This looks a lot different from what we had before. Now we're ready for showtime. We wanna get this up on the web. We wanna publish it live. We can do that very easily as well. We can hop back over uh, <clears throat> into Web Matrix. All we need to do is hit the publish button, as we saw a little earlier. Here is the publishing settings. Let's say that our hosting provider has already given us uh, the internet settings we need for this particular site. So I'll go ahead and click on this go down to the profile I've got from my hosting provider and click open and save. The next screen here is gonna check for any compatibility differences for PHP and MySQL. I'm just gonna go ahead and ignore that for now. In this pop-up window here, we're seeing that Web Matrix is checking uh, locally as well as on our web server to see if there's any differences in the files. And down below, it's also saying that it's ready to go to publish our database as well. Things look good to go. Go ahead and click continue. Down here below, it's giving us a nice little progress bar. So within just a few seconds here, we should be able to see the new site 
published up on the web, ready to go for our visitors to be able to see. And it's going through all of the updates. Excellent, publishing complete. I can click on the link, goes ahead and brings us back to the web browser, opens up a new tab, and within a second here, we should be able to see the site, as we saw it just before in the preview mood, mode, ready to go. Bravo, right there. So within just a few minutes, we were able to install, customize, and deploy a Joomla website using WebMatrix, easy as pie. Joomla rocks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ryan. So th thank you again, Ryan. Th that was, uh, that was Awesome. I, I love being able to see uh, not only ASP.NET, but also PHP open source applications right here within WebMatrix. So, as you know, we're here streaming live to thousands of people around the world, and we're here at CodeMash. And it's exciting for me because it's the first time at a community event where I get to say the next words, and that is that we have a launch. Web Matrix is officially available today in its RTM form. You can go download it right now from Microsoft.com slash web. So <laughs> But as we talked about early in the presentation, there are many different flavors of web development. And Web Matrix and the open source applications you've just seen are simply flavors of web development. We have many more platform updates that we want to talk about today. Specifically, ASP.NET MVC 3. It's getting dependency injection. It's getting the Razor in its new view engine. It's getting global action filters. Uh, it's getting a great validation support with AJAX and jQuery, very unobtrusive support. And additionally, IS Express and SQL Server Compact Edition are available in the uh, Visual Studio Service Pack 1. But one of the things that's very dear to me is all of the open source contributions that Microsoft has been making over the past number of years. In March last year, we announced that we were going to be contributing to jQuery. I don't know if you've been paying attention or seen a lot of the things that Microsoft has been doing with jQuery, but we've contributed an entire client templating, uh, client side templating library. We've uh, contributed plugins for globalization and for data linking. It's very exciting to me to see those plugins being accepted as official plugins and the client side templating library will be part of the core in a future version of jQuery. Additionally, we've been working with Outer Curve on a new package management system called NuGet. NuGet allows you to find, install, and manage all of those great .NET open source packages that are out there. We've seen a tremendous amount of movement around NuGet. Since August, we've had 300 plus uh, uh, packages submitted to the project. That's very exciting for me. And of course, ASP.NET MVC, as always, is also open source as well. To show you a lot of this in action, please help me welcome James Senior back up to the stage to talk about building a site with ASP.NET MVC 3. Thanks very much, guys. I told you I'd be back. So let me just close down some of the Joomla goodness that we just saw, and we'll kick off. Now, in Web Matrix earlier on, you saw how simple it was to get a website out there on the internet. Very simple. Now, what if your web application grows in size and complexity? Well, you're going to face some problems and challenges. You're going to need you know, a dev team. So if your dev team grows, how do you share source code? You need some kind of source control. You're also going to need to be able to test your growing code base to ensure that it's high quality. You also want to do performance testing and other things like that. And that's where Visual Studio 2010 and ASP.NET MVC 3 provide a great growing up opportunity for your application and make it easy to do. I'm going to show you a demo now of some new stuff we've got coming out in MVC 3. Um, as well as NuGet, we're very excited about. So let me go create a new project. And we're going to call this guy CodeMash, appropriately. And you'll notice that I get an option here to, and my cursor has disappeared. And that is the magnifier. There 
There we go, it's back again. Thank you very much. Cool, so we have our di open dialog here. We have uh, internet application. When we're gonna select a Razor view engine, notice that we have a drop down. We've got the traditional SPX view engine here as well, um, but we're gonna choose the Razor one. Um, you can also add your own flavor of view engine. So if you like Spark, for example, or uh, Hamel, then you can add that too. You can also create a unit test project as before and put in your own uh, testing framework. So if you like NUnit, XUnit, it's completely extensible as you'd expect. Now I call this the, the good evil checkbox. So currently we're being evil, currently we're being good. We're gonna be evil with this particular demo and we won't create a test project. Now over in Solution Explorer, let me just show to you the new views that we get in MVC3. You'll see here that everything has the familiar CSHTML extensions. So that signifies that we're talking about a Razor view as opposed to the traditional ASPX view engine. Now, as developers, we like to use lots of open source libraries, whether it's a dependency injection framework, whether it's a testing framework, or APIs and SDKs to make calls out to third-party services. Now, finding these and the latest versions and all of their dependencies can be sometimes a bit of a challenge. And that's where NuGet comes in to the rescue. I'm going to show you the GUI approach to getting NuGet packages, these open source libraries, uh, into my project. If I click online, we'll see we've got the NuGet official package source, as well as a local packages option. Now, let me just talk about the local packages option for a second. This is not a feed out on the internet like the official feed is, but it's actually a local version. Now this could be a feed server within the firewall or a, fo a folder on my local file system. And people are starting to use this inside their development teams to provide their developers with a specific set of open source libraries that they use time and time and again. So you might want to think about that the next time you're setting up your environments. Now I can go ahead and search for, let's say, my favorite DI framework, which is an inject. We see we get a ninject.mvc flavor. Now this is a specific version for MVC3, which takes advantage of the new dependency injection hooks inside of ASP.NET MVC3, where you can add DI into controllers, views, and lots of other good stuff. You'll also notice that this package has a few dependencies. And NuGet takes care of installing all of these other things that I need to get my package up and running without me having to configure anything at all. We've also got testing frameworks available. Let's go and search for um, my favorite one, which is, um, if we come back here, there we go. Just a bit of lag on, on the network there, unfortunately. Um, this can be the, the challenge with uh, demoing at a conference. But once I get the, uh, the net back, we'll be able to search for mock. There we go. Oh, no, it's canceled it again. Right. There we go. So let's search for mock. We can install that package. And what it's going to do is drop in an assembly into the references here. So it's registered. Now, packages can consist of not just assemblies, but they can also consist of things like classes, startup scripts. Um, as well as modifying files that exist in the projects already, like the web config. So if we need to set up a package with a few lines of uh, XML in the web config, we can do that too. Now, the other way of installing NuGet packages is in the library package manager here and going to package manager console. Now, this is going to give us a more of a, a powerful way of um, adding packages. I'm going to actually go and zoom in here so you can see a little bit more clearly what I'm doing. Um, so first of all, I can do calls like uh, list package and go against the remote server. And that will bring down a list of all of the packages available I can go and um, peruse through and figure out whether I want to install. I'm going to install a specific one now called SQL CE Entity Framework. Notice how we have autocomplete as well, so I don't have to do all of the typing. And this is going to add a special flavor of entity framework code first, which allows us to create databases from models. Now to do that, I'm gonna go and create a new model first of all. Okay, I'm gonna close the references down. And inside here, 
we'll add a new class file. And we'll call it product or product, depending on how you spell product. OK. Similar theme to the bakery. We're going to have a, a, a product theme. And I got a code snippet here, which is going to help me fill this out with a few uh, properties. Notice how we've got this category class that we need to go and generate. I'll get Visual Studio to take care of that for me. Um, we're going to make this more visible to everything else. And then add another code snippet to finish off that class. Now notice we've got these references between category and products. That sets up associations and also relationships in the database once Entity Framework has been set up. You'll also notice that these classes are very lightweight. We haven't added any extra cruft to them like base classes or attributes that are required for this. It's very lightweight. Now let me go and add in our context where we can define how Entity Framework is going to create our database. So let's call this store context. And inside of the store context, we're going to inherit from DB context. That's, that is not context. That is context. There we go. And we're going to bring in that namespace. Got a code snippet here, which will give us the context. Now, this tells Entity Framework that we want to go and create these uh, tables from these particular models. Um, so now we're good to go. At this point, I could tell Entity Framework that I've got a seeding strategy in that I want to insert, database, uh, in insert data the first time the database is created. Um, and you can either fill that in yourself, or you can get it from other sources. That's up to you. Now, in this particular example, I'm actually going to create an admin scaffold um, to do that instead. And I'm going to head back to NuGet because I'm feeling really good about this tool. Um, and I'm going to look for another open source package and install it. Instead, this is going to be, um, let's see, install package. And this one is called MVC scaffold. Now, this is a different type of package. This doesn't have assets, code files, assemblies, and things like that. It modifies the PowerShell um, scripts that I have available. So I can do things like scaffold controller and point it at one of my models and then also give it the, the context that it needs. So in this case, store context is um, what I've used to create the database. So I'm going to press enter. It's going to go away and look through my product class. It's going to inspect it, figure out what the properties are, and it's going to create a controller and um, CRUD-based views for me so that I can simply go and run now. Um, there we go. And navigate to the product controller. So let's go over here. And now we've got our scaffolding. So I can start to add in uh, various items. So let's say uh, coffee, cake, 4.99, and Uh, carrot cake. Now, it also comes with validation built in through the helpers that we have in MVC. Um, but there's server side validation. We'll go and fix that in a little while. So, heading back into Visual Studio 2010, we go and inspect our solution a little bit more carefully at the top here. I'm going to show all, I, show all files. We'll see that we've now got our database created. So, I didn't actually create this. It was created by Entity Framework code first based off of our models the first time we ran our application. So it took care of it for us. Scrolling down, let's go and take care of that uh, client-side validation. Now, client-side validation, it's not new in MVC 3. We had it in MVC 2. But what is new is the way that we do the validation. So for starters, you'll see that we're bringing in jQuery by default in our MVC 3 projects. Um, and we also, as well as do that, ship a new library, jQuery uh, Validate, which of course is a really popular validation library. And on top of that, we layer our own unobtrusive um, script, which hooks in to provide um, validation on the client side without inserting um, JavaScript into the view. So if I go back to my product now, 
product controller. And I go and create new item. Let's say pizza. And I try and create a product. We'll notice we'll get client side validation. So there we see we have the price entered and it goes away. Very cool. So with that, we've seen a number of things. First of all, we've seen how in MVC3 we have the new Razor syntax. We've seen how NuGet makes it very easy to get those must-have packages, those op open source libraries, into your uh, projects with ease. We've also seen how Entity Framework Code First makes it really, really easy to create databases from models. And finally, we saw some of the new jQuery um, validation libraries as well as unobtrusive um, validation. Thank you very much. Thank you, James, for showing us all the goodness here with ASP.NET MVC, uh, some of the great new validation support, um, and, and, and everything that comes with, with that MVC framework. Uh, it's pretty exciting. Now, another thing I'm very excited to announce is that all of the technologies that you've seen today, so ASP.NET MVC, IIS Express, SQL Server Compact Edition, NuGet, Orchard, all available right now on Microsoft.com slash web. So I encourage you to go out and download your flavor of web development at Microsoft.com slash web. Now, if you're online, we've got lots more content for you. If you're here, the wireless may not be so good. So with that, thank you very much. Hi everybody and welcome back. Today I'm joined by Bill Staples, the General Manager of the Web Platform and Tools team. And Bill, just for everybody at home, tell them what you do at Microsoft and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, thanks James. Yeah, um, I'm the General Manager for the Web Platform and Tools team at Microsoft. That's the engineering team uh, that builds the Web Matrix product we're going to talk about today, but also I... framework uh, for building web applications, and then the Visual Studio tools uh, the developers use to build web applications and websites. Wow, so you're a pretty busy guy then. That's a lot of products. <laughs> <laughs> it is a great team. Uh, I've been at Microsoft now more than 10 years, 11 plus years actually, uh, the entire time working on web technologies, um, and my um, career before Microsoft was also focused on web and internet technology. So. Uh, I love this space, very, very passionate about uh, the web and, and building stuff on the internet. That is awesome. So today we're launching a brand new product from Microsoft called Web Matrix. Just tell everybody at home a bit about what Web Matrix is and who it's designed for. Sure. Uh, the story with Web Matrix actually goes way, way back for me personally. I, uh, uh, I was in college uh, 15 plus years ago, I guess, uh, doing pre-med. I wanted to be a doctor. And uh, part of that degree actually had me working in hospitals. And uh, I quickly realized it wasn't for me. <laughs> and at the same time, the internet was sort of taken off. And I thought, you know, computers were always a hobby. I wanted to learn how to uh, program on the internet. So I started building websites. And uh, back then, you know, it was all Linux. And I uh, worked a lot with Perl and uh, built up some websites with HTML, JavaScript, um, and uh, CSS and sort of self-taught on web and internet technology. Well, uh, I quickly uh, learned Cold Fusion and Classic ASP and PHP when it came out, and I just loved how quick and efficient and simple uh, it was in built to build a website um, with those technologies. Well, I came to Microsoft, as I said, about 11 years ago, and the entire time I've wanted to build a product that could help developers who are focused on building websites. First, maybe those, uh, those who want to uh, learn web development, maybe it is their uh, major in college or uh, their interest in high school, maybe, maybe not. Maybe they're doing med medicine. <laughs> maybe they not, yeah, exactly. Anybody can build a website quickly with the right set of tools. And also those who make it their business to build out websites quickly and efficiently using open source. And so WebMatrix is, is that product. 
Excellent. So a dream realized. <laughs> it is. I've, I've been wanting to build this kind of product for a long time. Fantastic. So what are the main approaches that a developer is going to take in WebMatrix? Well, there's sort of two paths, as I alluded to. There's the getting started. If you're, if you're new to web development and you want to learn how to do web development, WebMatrix is a great environment to do that. It includes everything you need uh, from a basic tool editing tool, uh, a database and web server, as well as um, access to the most popular programming frameworks, including PHP, ASP.NET, and a new syntax we're calling Razor for ASP.NET web pages that makes building uh, websites super, super easy. Uh, the web server, built-in web server, supports both ASP.NET and PHP, so you can run uh, both of those. And the tool itself makes it really easy to not only build custom web pages, but start a new website using one of the most, any of the most popular web applications on the internet. Mm -hmm. So you've may have heard of WordPress or Drupal or Joomla, .NET Nuke, uh, Orchard. Yep. All of those are instantly accessible through WebMatrix. You can download them, get started right away. Cool. All right. So that's a good introduction to you know what the tool is, what the uh, platform is, and also. Uh, how people are going to use it. Once people get inside of WebMatrix, they've downloaded it, what are some of those features that you recommend people check out straight away? Uh, well, when you open up WebMatrix for the first time, you see a screen that lets you basically start a website using uh, one of three approaches. Right? You can start using uh, the App Gallery, which is a gallery of those open source apps I mentioned. Uh, there's several dozen open source applications in there. You select an app, it downloads it from the community, and you get started. I love that feature because it makes uh, building websites super easy and really powerful because those, those applications are uh, built using uh, thousands of web developers who are experts in their own technologies and it makes it really easy to get started. Mm -hmm. You can also choose a site from template option which includes some really basic templates, uh, site templates built here at Microsoft using the new ASP.NET web pages technology uh, with Razor and you can use those to both learn web development, learn Razor, as well as get a, a, a simple site up and running quickly. There's also a site from folder option that lets you point to any folder on your hard drive and instantly turn it into a website. So if you've downloaded source code or you're sharing source code with a friend and you want to just use that uh, folder as a website, click that option and get started right away. Once you've started a website using any of those approaches, um, there's sort of uh, uh, four main areas of the tool that you'll find. Uh, the first area that you land on is sort of the website home page. Um, and that gets you quick links to the rest of the areas of the tool. It also um, gives you some basic information about your site, where it, where it lives on, on your hard drive and so forth. Uh, you can access basic web server configuration from that page and also look at live requests. So as you're browsing the site, testing it, there's a, a feature there called requests that you can actually see the web server in action, nice. how it's processing your website. And see where the requests fail, perhaps, and debug yeah. that way. Cool. Yeah, easy to troubleshoot uh, yeah. problems that way. Uh, once you've gotten uh, through that uh, first page, then there's, there's three other kind of areas of the tool. There's a, an area um, uh, uh, where you can edit the files of the website, so you can browse the directories and the files in your website, and you can open up any file. The editor supports HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, and ASP.NET, and uh, has full syntax coloring for all of those languages. Nice. Um, it's got all the basic features, you know, find and replace, um, uh, um, auto indentation, uh, line numbers, print, all those basic features. Uh, and then it also has the ability to open the project, if you want, into Visual Studio. So if you're starting out with Web Matrix and you want to use Microsoft's professional tools uh, in Visual Studio, you can, with a click of the button, go from that editor, right, uh, right, open the project right into Visual Studio. Is there any compatibility issues going from one to the other, or is it designed to be seamless? Uh, it's de designed to be seamless for all of the languages that uh, Visual Studio supports. So for ASP.NET applications and ASP.NET web pages, uh, the project will transition smoothly, seamlessly and you can start uh, using the advanced features of Visual Studio. Cool. Now, you mentioned a couple of times something called Razor. Mm -hmm. uh, I know this is something that people out there in the community are, are really getting behind, and they you know, say that's a really sexy way of programming web applications. Why is that? What's so exciting about <laughs> Razor? Well, it's kind of uh, back to the future. Uh, sort of. <laughs> it's like, I, like I said before, you know, I've, I've wanted to build this kind of uh, product for a while, and one of the aspects of it is uh, a really s simple 
and lightweight approach to web development. Uh, now, what we found as we've talked to lots of web developers is that there's a variety of approaches out there. Uh, and some people value one approach over others. Uh, one really popular approach right now is a model view controller approach. And um, that approach has a really clean separation between the data of the application, the business logic, and the presentation of it. And what you end up having is files you know, uh, that make up the code of the application um, that split those three aspects. We have a programming approach at Microsoft um, that we call ASP.NET MVC for model view controller mm -hmm. for that exact approach. We're actually launching uh, today ASP.NET MVC 3 for those developers. Uh, we also have our traditional ASP.NET Web Forms approach, which is a very um, uh, friendly approach for doing web development that's, that's um, page forms and controller based. So if you're uh, familiar with building uh, applications with Visual Basic or um, building WinForms based applications, the Web Forms model feels very natural. Yep. The Web Pages approach that we're introducing today with uh, Razor is very much like uh, classic ASP used to be uh, back, back when I got future. back to the future, like when I got started. And when uh, the great thing about uh, web web pages is it's super easy to go uh, from learning HTML to adding in dynamic server code into the same page inline, mm -hmm. and the syntax is really intelligent. Basically, you. Uh, um, uh, tell the, the code parser when you're going to start uh, using server-side code, so you transition from HTML into server-side code, and it intelligently finds, uh, runs that code, and knows automatically when you're done with it and ready to resume HTML. It's kind of magical. It's, it's, it's hard <laughs> to explain, but uh, if you've seen the demos, you'll look at it, and if you've done this kind of web development before, you'd, I, I think most people say, wow, that's really intuitive. Yep. The other really cool thing about uh, Razor is we're outbuilding a set of helpers that make common web tasks really simple. So for example, connecting to a database, um, uh, connecting to Facebook and getting your friends list or uh, liking uh, a particular page that you're on, uh, connecting to Twitter, uh, doing the same kinds of things, you know, viewing your Twitter feed, um, uh, you know, uh, following friends and so forth. And then also, you know, uh, for example, for e-commerce type sites, it's really easy to integrate PayPal into a web page to do simple e-commerce transactions. Right. So really powerful things, really common tasks for web, web developers nowadays can be done by calling a simple helper function. Excellent. And that just kind of integrates just as you would, would write Razor code as well. So similar kind of syntax. And I love the way that you can mingle in HTML and just go to code just by typing the at symbol because yep. that's what you're going to see instead of having a, an angle bracket percent or an angle bracket question mark if you're a PHP developer you're going to see that uh, at sign but then the code pass from web matrix and ASP web pages figures out when you finish coding yep. you don't even have to tell it so that's that's the cool thing about it yeah that at symbol uh, starts the code and we help you uh, automatically know when it, when you're done coding and the helpers are amazing too because um, it's a, a community of helpers that we're building, not just a static set that ship with the Web Matrix product, but uh, go into any ASP.NET Web Pages website uh, on your local machine, browse to that site, and then browse to underscore admin, and you open up uh, a control panel of sorts that lets you browse a whole gallery of helpers uh, driven by the community. You can install those helpers, uh, including a bunch that we've uh, created uh, here to bootstrap the, the ecosystem and get access to you know, uh, eventually hundreds if not thousands of helpers available to developers from the community. And that's a key thing because you go to one place for the kind of definitive list of web matrix helpers instead of having to go scour the internet and maybe get the wrong version, maybe find a version which isn't the official one, but mm -hmm. we've got a list now, a feed online where people can um, target against and bring down the latest version, which is a really cool way of doing it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So um, you mentioned before about um, a new version of the web server. So what's that, that about? We had a, a kind of a lightweight development server beforehand, Netcode and Cassini, but now we've got a new version. Is that right? Yeah. Our uh, web server story has been a little confusing for developers at times. Uh, in the past, we've always had IIS that's shipped as part of Windows, both client and server. So Windows XP had it in there. 
uh, Windows Vista, Windows 7, I'll have a version of IIS there. Uh, it's essentially the same version of IIS that we ship in Windows Server, but uh, with some limitations. Then in Visual Studio, we've had a web server, uh, VSP.NET development web server. Sometimes people call it Cassini, which is a different web server, um, very simple one, mostly focused on ASP.NET hosting. Doesn't have all the same features like SSL uh, or the variety of authentication me methods that IIS supports, but mostly tuned for ASP.NET web development. What we've heard from web developers, they sort of want the combo of those two things. They want the full IIS feature set so that when they're debugging their web applications, it looks and behaves just like it will on IIS mm -hmm. without requiring an update to the operating system and without requiring administrative privileges. Uh, the built-in version of IIS in the operating system requires that you be an administrator on the box just like you're running IIS on the server. Well, IIS Express that ships with uh, WebMatrix, it's also available for Visual Studio customers, uh, uh, solves all of those problems. It is the full version of IIS with all the same features that ship in IIS 7.5 with Windows 2008 R2, but it's factored in a way that it launches as a regular process with the tool. So in Visual Studio, you hit F5, IIS Express launches. In WebMatrix, you hit F12, IIS Express automatically launches and hosts the web application you're running on. Uh, you have access to all the same features of IIS Server. Uh, it's fully integrated into WebMatrix and Visual Studio to manage and configure it. And then when you close down the tool, the server closes down and well, you're done with it, don't have to worry about it, and it doesn't require administrative privileges to, to use. So uh, it's a great, uh, uh, a, a great uh, solution for web developers, and it runs all the way from Windows 7 all the way down to Windows XP. So you can get at it from any operating system. Very useful indeed. Now, whilst we're on the topic of the parts of the stack, um, what about SQL Server? Because we've also had done some work around making that more friendly, haven't we? Yeah, and that's kind of a back to the future story as well. I, you know, SQL Express, SQL Server Express, has long been our web development database. And it's a great, um, sort of like IIS on Windows client, it's the full version of SQL Server, but available for free and you install it on your desktop operating system and use it for web development. The challenges the SQL Express has are similar to the challenges that IIS has, uh, the full IIS on Windows client. It is a full server. It runs as a service. It, uh, it's uh, several hundred megabytes to download and install, and it eats up lots of memory on your system while it's running. And uh, as a web developer, you know sometimes I want that and sometimes I don't. Um, Back in my day, when I started doing web development, I used Access a lot. Uh, File-based database, super easy to create. Yep. You can copy it from the development to the server machine when you're ready to deploy. And then you can upsize it or migrate the data to SQL Server when you're ready to go to real production. Right. And uh, I wanted a similar solution for WebMatrix. So we worked with the SQL Server team to integrate um, what we call SQL Server Compact into WebMatrix. Mm -hmm. Also, it'll be available for Visual Studio customers with uh, Service Pack 1 coming out later this year. But SQL Server Compact is really cool because it is a file-based database. Uh, when you go into the database um, feature within WebMatrix and you say new database, we create the right folder and file inside your website automatically for you. Hmm. You go in there and create tables, we'll automatically create those tables inside uh, SQL Server Compact file and you can do queries against it, everything right there within the tool. And then when you go ahead and um, uh, get ready to deploy that application, copy it from one machine to another, check it into Source Depot, the database goes along with it just like any other file of your project. Nice. So it's super lightweight, uh, it takes up just a few megabytes of memory to load, and uh, you know, loads as part of the web application, goes away when you close down the tool, just like IS Express does on the web server side. So. Right. So I'm seeing a consistent theme here. Um, lightweight, lightweight, easy to install, easy. portable yep. across the whole stack. That's kind of really what the... Those are the big themes of WebMatrix, yeah. Fantastic, okay. Um, what about getting your website live onto the internet, publishing it out there? Because that's obviously a key point. Um, once you create your website from scratch or you've built it from an open source web application, what about publishing? Have we made any improvements there or made it easier to do that? Yeah, that that's often... Um, where the rubber meets the road with uh, web applications. You can oftentimes build them, 
they work great, they look great, they're attractive, you're ready to go, and sometimes getting it up to the hosting provider um, is the most complicated step because you're talking about a remote computer that you don't configure oftentimes, you don't own, you don't know what software is installed or not and whether it's going to work. And So getting it up there and keeping it up to date can be a challenge. And so we have focused a lot on um, publishing with WebMatrix. And we support uh, two methods of publishing. First, the traditional FTP style publishing. So anyone who is familiar and has that uh, available at their hosting provider can use WebMatrix to publish with. We also support the new web deploy publishing with um, WebMatrix. And web deploy is a publishing protocol that we've developed here at Microsoft that has several advantages over FTP. Uh, for example, uh, web deploy can automatically detect for you which files have changed. Uh, nice. And so you don't have to no longer track which files you edited right. when you're updating a site. It'll automatically difference your site locally with the server and automatically publish it. So I've always got lazy. I just uploaded the whole thing again, so it took ages. <laughs> if you've got a big website, it can take forever to yeah. upload. This will automatically figure out which pages changed and upload just those. The other really cool thing is uh, it not only can publish the files of your website, but also the database. Oh. So if you're using SQL Compact or SQL Server or MySQL uh, locally for your website, you hit publish and it'll automatically push the files and the database up to the uh, hosting provider for you. Very cool. And that you can't do with FTP. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's also a completely secure, so it uses SSL to transfer, so all your files and settings and data is transferred securely. It's uh, super fast and efficient. Um, and we work with our hosting providers that are offering web matrix hosting to also provide um, a really super easy way to get your publishing settings incorporated in the tool. So when you sign up for an account, and um, uh, I recommend uh, you click the link inside the publishing dialog to find a hosting provider, because we've got a link there to the, all the hosting providers we've been working with mm -hmm. um, that are offering WebMatrix hosting. When you sign up for an account with them, they'll actually send you an email or inside the control panel you use to access the site, provide a link that you can then download an XML file that has all the settings, you import them into that publishing dialog, and no longer have to worry about what was that username and password and what was the server and yeah. site. All that's set up for you, you just hit publish and away you go. I like that. I've used that before and it's like having autofill yeah. for your settings. Right. You just click a button and then magically everything's put in. It's, it's a massive time saver. That's cool. Absolutely. When we talk to hosting providers, they say the number one call they get is somebody who's having publishing problems and can't remember their username or password or server name or something, I can right? Imagine. So this saves everybody that headache. Fantastic. Okay. One other feature that I've noticed when playing around with WebMatrix is uh, SEO optimization. Now this is something we introduced with um, the Web Platform Installer and IIS um, before, but now we're introducing it to WebMatrix. It must be a popular feature mm -hmm. to make it into WebMatrix. Tell us a bit about that. It is. Um, you know, one of the things that web developers tell us all the time is the website development process doesn't end with creating it and publishing it. Um, you want to make the website popular. You, uh, one of the most, way, most common ways to make it a popular website is to get it highly ranked on a search engine. Well, it turns out search engines use a, a set of heuristics to determine you know, which site is relevant or not based on keywords, and those heuristics are fairly well known. And so what we've done is we've built an SEO tool that scans your website just like any search engine would and then tells you things about your website that are really hard to know otherwise. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, it can tell you when there are pages or links broken within your website. It can tell you um, if there's metadata missing from the site that search engines would look for, um, including not only sort of meta tags but also you know, standard HTML tags that might be confusing the search engine. It can tell you if there's canonicalization issues where uh, maybe you link to the home page using a variety of different capitalization or link methods and each of those may appear to be a distinct link from the search engine's perspective and throw off the weighting of your website. So there's some pretty advanced um, SEO features built into the WebMatrix tool. Just go to the reports tab 
run a report on your site and find out the information that you may ne have never known about the website. Yeah, there's some subtleties there that um, those rules are sometimes difficult to, to understand and knowing them all is almost impossible. So having that tool is really easy. And I love being able to reference old reports and compare how I'm improving as well. That's another, another nice feature in there. That report section as well, you know, we, we're introducing some of the SEO um, searching that we've been talking about here. That's an area that we'd really like to develop out in the future upcoming releases of WebMatrix. Um, we've heard from web developers, not only SEO is important, but things like <clears throat> security, you know, scanning for security vulnerabilities or uh, performance, more advanced performance and other diagnostics would be super helpful to have incorporated into the tool. And so that's an area um, to look forward to in terms of expanding the set of features available over time. Cool. Going back to hosting providers just quickly, I know that finding a good hosting provider is sometimes hard to do, and not many people know about the hosting gallery that we have on Microsoft.com slash web. How is that providing a, a good resource for developers? Great question. Yeah, if you've uh, ever struggled to find a hosting provider that's both low cost and has the right set of features you want, the hosting gallery is a great option. Uh, it's on you know, www.microsoft.com slash web slash hosting. And uh, it's basically a gallery of hosting providers where the hosting provider um, submits their offers onto that website. And you can then search and filter based on a set of criteria. We also have ratings and comments available so you can uh, let others know how your experience has gone with a particular hoster. And you can actually um, you know, choose among ho uh, hosting providers uh, really easily. The prices are all listed there as well, so you can find you know, the best deal for your money. Uh, WebMatrix also links to that gallery, as I mentioned before, if you go to publishing or inside the tool, um, you can say find hosting provider and it'll link you directly to that site. Very cool. Well, Bill, thanks so much for talking to us and congratulations on a successful product launch. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks, James. It's great to be here.